guys welcome back to my channel today we're doing a july favorites i'm so proud of myself back to back months on the favorites videos let's go so we're going to start with the food category first this month because i have gotten a lot of fun awesome foods going to the different food stores that i have near me specifically Publix and trader joe's and wegmans if you haven't seen any of those videos go check them out i did a wegmans haul we did a trader joe's meal prep monday video I've just been like, I'm doing too much at the grocery stores, okay? We're gonna start out with the Trader Joe's things because Trader Joe's has been bumping this summer with their summer items. These are plantain croutons and I love me a good plantain, okay? I did not know that they made these. I don't even know if this is a summer item, but it's the first time I've ever seen it at a Trader Joe's. And let me tell you, if you are a salad bitch, you need to get these croutons. They're just like so, so crunchy and dense. I think I talked about the Trader, Joe, Trader Joe's rosemary croutons not too long ago, but they're more like flaky and not crunchy. And these ones have an entirely different texture. They're super hard and crunchy and they're just the perfect addition to a summer salad. Next up, we got another Trader Joe's. Was that a fly? These flies, bro. The flies in North Carolina are really sending me into another dimension. These are in fact a summer item and these are the Salsa Verde corn tortilla chips in lime. I have another lime chip that I'm going to show you afterwards, but I have been so into these. My mouth's watering. My mouth's watering. <laughs> mm. A thick corn chip. Nothing like it. We'll take the thick corn chips over the Lay's and like any of those things. They are so good. Regular macros on these guys, seven fat, 18 carb, and two protein. But I just really like anything with lime and anything that has that harder chip consistency. Speaking of that, this is not Trader Joe's, but this is Publix. Good old Publix. These. These are in the Hispanic section, I believe. And let me tell you, if you like lime, those are like standard lime flavor this is exceptional lime flavor they are so good very limey though like almost sour tostones lime tostones crunchy green plantain chips what i've been doing with these is making a beef bowl like a burrito bowl and then for some added crunch i've been using these i'm I, you know you could put the plantain croutons on there but listen, the lime flavoring of this is just so freaking good. Next up is a fiber bar from Trader Joe's. Now, if you were around in the OG Manders food days, I used to eat fiber one bars like it was my day job. I loved them. They were so good. But then they pulled the Lenny's and Larry's and they changed the formula and they're dry and they're not good anymore. So I've really not been like dabbling into the fiber bars recently, but I tried these on a whim. And the bottom of them actually has a full chocolate coating, which I love on granola bars. They have like standard macros for like kind of similar to the chewy bars, I think. They're not on the individual wrappers, but I think it's like maybe four fat, 25 carb and two protein, four or five grams of fiber. So really good if you're somebody who struggles getting fiber into your day. These are really delicious and don't have like that gross chemically fiber taste to them. I also want to shout out the Ubi Mochi. I had a my very first taro root bubble tea this week. I've had the matcha ones and I've had the brown sugar cinnamon ones, but I've never tried taro and I had both the taro root tea and I had taro root froyo this week and it was so good that it inspired me to get the ubi mochi. Now I know taro and ubi are not the same thing, but it's like a similar it sounds weird when I say bland, but it is kind of bland taste to it. It's like one of those things where you're not sure what it tastes like, but it tastes good. So I'm going to throw in the Ubi Mochi from Trader Joe's as well because I really, really like them. And, and I freaking love mochi. I really do. Last but not least, we have a vegan protein. Now, 
I, over the course of the last like year or so, have been trying to branch out and try a lot more vegan protein options and meals and stuff. I share a ton of them on my Instagram, but I have wanted to bake with more vegan items and also make oatmeal. So I found that using vegan protein is way better for just like oatmeals and thicker things. Whereas like the Driven Iso Drive, which is my personal favorite, I use that for all of my smoothies and anything like that. Just even just mixing it in with almond milk and I never do that so like the quality of their protein of driven's protein is so good and like for me personally nothing hurts my stomach especially the vegan because it's dairy free but even their isolates 99% lactose free so if you're somebody who like isn't truly 100% lactose intolerant, but still needs something that's more sensitive on your stomach, you can't go wrong with either. But if you are vegan, their vegan proteins are very good. And I did test it just in almond milk by itself, like as a drink. I probably would have used more almond milk going back because it was a little bit thick and I just don't like drinking my proteins like that. I would rather them be thin, kind of like the core power consistency. Either way though, I've been using both vanilla and chocolate to make baked oats and overnight oats and they are getting the stamp of approval by me because I'm not somebody who usually uses a vegan protein and I should. I only have three, well, four, but one I physically don't have because I gave it to my friend when she was here this week. <laughs> beauty products this month, which I need to give myself like a high five because I have not been spending a lot of money on beauty products and I'm proud of myself for that. This is Revive, but it's also known as R&B. I thought that Lush discontinued R&B. It's like a leave-in hair moisturizer and it's got kind of like a sandalwoody, musky smell to it. This is just for, for me personally, one of those things where the smell is worth whatever the heck it even does to my hair because I don't know. It does make it softer, I feel, but like, even if it didn't, I would still buy it. You know what I mean? <laughs> the smell is so good. It vividly brings me back to like 18 year old Manders who was obsessed with Lush and I used to slather my hair in this and lay outside in the Florida sun. That's what it reminds me of, but they changed the name to Revive and I'm very happy that I get to bring it back this summer. It's just, it's a good hair smell. If you need to switch up your hair smell and your shampoo and conditioner doesn't last in your hair, like the scent, give this a try. And speaking of scents, this is actually just a body cream and I'm totally gonna butcher the name of this. So you know what? I'm not even gonna try. But I grabbed this at Sephora and I wish that I was better at explaining to you what these things smelled like. But this honestly might be one of my favorite smelling lotions I've ever smelled in my entire life. It is, it claims to like, you know, firm and tighten your skin, which I don't really know if it does all that, but just again, the smell alone, you need it. it smells so good. It's such a nice summer scent, but I'm just a... I'm a fan of the musk. I like the musky smells even during the summertime. I'm not a floral hoe. So I don't know. Bomb de Bia. Bomb Dia Bright Cream Renewing Fruit AHAs and Vitamin C. Listen, it smells amazing. We're going to talk about a little Laneige Lip Mask. My favorite of all time. This is my literal obsession. I have it in every single flavor. They are in various rooms in my house, in my car, in my bag. You will not catch me without this lip mask. I do not only wear it at night. I wear it all hours of the day. I don't care. It's amazing. And just the mango one, they needed it. When I saw they were releasing a mango one, I bought three. And I was like, I need it because when it goes away, I'm going to want the mango one. Gingerbread during the uh, winter months is also a close second. Lastly, in the beauty category, I just want to talk about the new Tula like skin elixing serum tint that they just came out with on the first. So it's only been out for a few days. I don't have it because I literally gave it. My friend that was here, she was obsessed with it. And I was like, you know what? just take it. Now I'm wishing I had it to show you, but I'm going to get another one. So don't worry. I will show you on my Instagram. So make sure that you're following along. But this skin, I, I, like it's not even a serum. I don't even know what to call it, but it has the slight tint of the updated blurring and moisturizing filter primer, but it also has the SPF benefits of the sunscreen, which you know I love. Their sunscreen is by far the best sunscreen I've ever tried in my entire life. And their filter primer, blurring and moisturizing primer is my absolute favorite primer. I wear it by itself under makeup, under the, sun, the sunscreen. I'm obsessed. So this like concoction that they just made 
is so awesome because you can just wear it by itself and it looks so beautiful. It's so radiant and glowy and dewy. I'm so mad that I don't have it to show you, but I promise you it's so good. It's made with S Pro Complex, of course, you know, the pre and probiotics, the collagen, niacinamide, which is really good for like evening out your skin tone as well as dark spots, which I've been dealing with, especially being more in the sun here. Ceramides and hyaluronic acid for that glow, like super, super moisturizing. And then it also has rainbow sea bright elixir, which helps brighten and protect the damaging effects of blue light and pollution. It also is in, I think they said 30 shades, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, 30 shades and it's got 12 hour long wear. Listen summertime you need it the sunscreen the tint the glower <laughs> it's so good Ugh. just trust me you need it then we have this cute little fanny pack or crossbody honestly the reason why i love this when maggie was here she had this and it was so cute because you can wear it as a crossbody or you can tighten it and wear it as a fanny pack and it was so cheap off amazon but in my opinion it doesn't look cheap like it looks, it looks nice and cute. I don't know, I love it because also I have the iPhone 13 Pro Max and a lot of times the fanny packs can't fit them in there like along with my wallet. So I like that it has a deeper pocket in the back and then the front pocket for my phone and a tiny little pocket in the front as well as one on the back. So this is like a loaded fanny pack. This might be one of the weirdest, well, I don't know if it's weird, but just different things that I've shown on my favorites videos before, and I've never had any moissanite, I hope I'm saying that properly, moissanite jewelry in my life, and I'm just not really a big jewelry person in general, but I have been really drawn to these like vintage -y style rings lately, and I found this company called Lane Woods, and I wanna show you this ring because I think it's so cute and it's so vintage -y. And it's just got like such a pretty little like daisy-ish flower look to it. I want to get more in gold, but I just thought that this was like so classy and my fingers, I they just feel bare. You know what I'm saying? And I like to have things on my hands to touch, but I wanted something like very high quality that wasn't going to just turn my fingers green and tarnish and that still looked really pretty and obviously like didn't look super cheap. So I got Moissanite and honestly, I really like it. It's still really shiny and I just like the vintage look of it. It's very... I don't know. It's very me. I just like it. So I wanted to share it because I wasn't expecting and maybe you are in the market for a Moissanite ring or piece of jewelry so okay a couple of rando things to end the favorites video one are these clips from Amazon we all know that the clips are very in right now along with the big shirts which by the way this is from Urban Outfitters and biker shorts my personal favorite biker shorts are these aligns from Lulu they're just the most comfortable they don't have a weird waistband and I am a size 6 in them and I'm a small in fleos the clips these clips on amazon were so cheap i'm pretty sure they were like six dollars or something for a pack and they are probably the only ones that actually hold my hair in the clips because i have fine hair so whenever i do the clips they always kind of like sag and just like fall out the back you know but these they're super tight and they don't give me a headache so you can wear it just like i had it or i can do a little twist guy put them into a bun and then clip it like so which is also again a really in <laughs> lastly i just want to mention these fleo switch up tanks i've been wearing them a lot in my videos recently in my instagram posts stories whatever and every time i wear this people ask me where it's from i think because the straps are just very thin and i personally really like the way that that looks and feels when i'm working out it's not like a ton of fabric on my shoulders and nothing's digging into my traps and this material is just so flattering it's not like too spandexy, but it's not too soft where you feel hot. It's perfect, and I will be buying the new release that just, well, now it's coming out on Tuesday, but it will have been out. I love these tanks. They're like my go-to workout tanks in the summertime. So that's everything. That's a wrap for my July favorites. Let me know, as always, in the comments what you've tried this month, what you think I might like to try. I love your guys' recommendations. I have tried so many things that you guys have recommended to me and absolutely love them. So thank you. And of course, as always, thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to click that thumbs up, hit the subscribe, and I will see you in my next video.